In 1983, James Clavell's Shogun card game was released, capitalizing on the popular book and miniseries of the same name. This is how to play the basic game. Welcome to Legendary Tactics. So the basic game can be played by three to seven players. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, exactly how to play the basic game, and I'll do the, uh, the follow-up uh, for the advanced game uh, at another time. First, the Shogun, the one and only, the most powerful and versatile of all the class cards. There are 18 Samurai class cards, and this is the best one. Next is the second best card, the Daimyo, worth 15 points. Next is the Hatamoto, also known as Richard Chamberlain. Uh, he is worth 12 points, and he is essentially uh, a samurai who'd gained special favor with the Shogun or the Daimyo, and had become a personal retainer of either of them. Next is a samurai. Next is a samurai, an ancient warrior of great skill, worth 10 points in the game. Next is a Ronin, a samurai. Next is a Ronin, a Samurai for Hire, worth 9 points in the game. Next up is a Consort, a Legal Mistress that Samurai were allowed to have, worth 8 points in the game. And last but not least, the Wife of a Samurai was also considered a Samurai. This card is worth 7 points in the game. There are 24 Peasant class cards in the game. The Shugo is the most valuable. He was an Administrator. Uh, and his worth is six points in the game. Then there are two peasants of equal value. Both cards are worth five, the fisherman and the farmer. Historically, they were quite well respected, and that's why they have a high value here. Next is the geisha, worth four points in the game. They were entertainers serving the samurai. The next peasant card, worth three points in the game, is a chonin or merchant. And finally, the last of the class cards is the Servant, worth only two points in the game. There are two Outcast cards, worth nothing. In the basic game, there is one Divinity card, the Buddha, which is like a wild card. In the basic game, there is also one Action card, which is the Spy. Finally, the last card in the basic game is the Guard card. It is used basically to protect the bottom of the deck from view. It has no impact on play. Also, there are eight mini cards, what they call strategy markers, uh, honorable favor request, passive, and power play. Next, I'll go over how scoring occurs. This will allow you to know how to accumulate the most points. The first strategy is to get pairs. If you have a pair, you add the power values of them together. So in this case, this would be worth 14 points. Next is three of a kind. If you have three of a kind, you add the first two cards and double the value of the third card. So this would be six plus six is 12 plus 12 is 24. The next option is four of a kind. That scores the same as three of a kind, then triple the fourth card value. So for example, in this case, four geishas would be four plus four is eight, double the next card, which is another eight, so that's 16, and then triple the next one, so that's 28. In the lucky case where you have five of a kind, which can be accomplished by having a wild card, then you would add it up as for four and then quadruple the value of the fifth card. So you have five plus five is 10, plus 10 is 20, plus 15 is 35, plus 20 is 55. The exception to this is that if you have a farmer and a fisherman, uh, even though they have different cards of the same power value, so they can be added together but not multiplied. So two farmers and one fisherman, this would be five plus five plus five, so 15. In this example, this would be just added up, five plus five plus five plus five for a score of 20. If you have three of a kind, then you can double the third card as per the previous rule. So five plus five plus 10 is 20, plus five plus five is 30. The other option is to get a class run, 
where you have five different cards of the same class. Obviously the peasant class is green and the samurai class is yellow. So uh, as they don't have to be in any particular order and farmers and, and, uh, and fishermen, even though they're worth the same value are considered to be different cards for the purpose of this. And basically you just um, add them all up. So in this case, it would be two plus four is six, plus five is 11, plus five is 16, plus six is 22. Here's an example of a samurai class run. Uh, as you can see, all different cards, just add them up. 12 plus eight is 20, plus 10 is 30, 37, 46. The Shogun card is the only one that can be included in both class runs. So you can see the, the yellow, orange color and the green. So it can be part of a class run in either a peasant class or a samurai class. And again, you just add them up. So this would be 12 plus eight is 20, plus 20 is 40, 47, 56. So here's the order of play. First of all, everyone receives one power play card or strategic marker, one passive, and an honorable favor request. Then the dealer deals one card face down to each player. The dealer is chosen at random. Keep this card secret. Then the dealer takes the top card off the deck, flips it over, everyone is allowed to see it, and offers it to the first person on his left. Okay, then the, that player may keep that card if they'd like. If not, they can refuse it and it goes to the second player. The second player has that choice and if it passes again to the third player, the third player uh, has to accept it unless they spend their honorable favor request. And if they do, then it's passed to the fourth player and so on down the line until someone uh, either uh, has won't use their honorable favor request or because it's already been used, they don't have a choice. This process continues until the players all have one face down card and four face up cards. When the dealer is passing cards around and there's only two players left, then the player, the first player gets offered that, that card. If they refuse, it goes to the second player who can refuse. And then it goes back to the first player who has to use a favor or accept the card. Then it's first call for action cards. The dealer says loudly, first call. This means that if the, the player has the spy card as a down card, it must be turned up and replaced face down by the next card from the deck. So in this case, the face down card was the spy card. And so that gets replaced by the next face down card from the deck. The spy card remains by the player's side. It'll be used in the last call phase. So the next phase is the replacement phase. For players who did not use their favor marker during the making of the hand can now discard any card in their hand and draw the next card in the deck. So they would spend their favor and let's say I wanted to get rid of this one and oh there we go. That makes it an interesting maybe more higher scoring combination. If you're replacing a down card with the honorable favor at this time the card stays face down. If you're replacing an, a, a card that's face up then that card remains face up when uh, the replacement is made. Then it's the last call phase. The dealer calls out for the spy and the spy is used. It's always used in the last call phase and the player has the right to look at one other player's down face down card before entering the final strategy uh, phase. So now normally you would take this card and scoop it underneath this, I suppose you could do the same thing here. So it's like this, so uh, the card can't accidentally be revealed to other players. If the spy is received as the face-up card during the making of the hands, then the spy card is put just to the side and the player gets the first choice of the next face-down card. I think I'll be taking that one from the top of the deck. If during the replacement phase, the honorable favor request is spent, the down card is discarded, and if the replacement card is in fact the spy, 
then this is used during the last call and is replaced by a fresh face down card at that time. Now we enter the final strategy phase, and this is where you would choose one of your passive or power play strategy markers. And this is used as a way to affect scoring. Once you've chosen your card, the players begin to reveal starting from the left and moving across and everyone reveals what their choice of strategy marker is. Once the strategy marker is revealed, you tally up the hand accordingly and add it to your score. There are two styles you can play this game in. Uh, one is the Occidental style where table talk is allowed and one is the Oriental style where no table talk is allowed except for the purpose of correcting a technical error. So how do you win? The first player to get 500 points wins in a standard game, or if you want to play an epic game, it's a thousand points. So how do you use the divinity cards, the wild cards? The Buddha or good karma card is the only pure wild card in the game and can be counted as a light card. So for example, in this hand, if we were to flip this over, uh, then this could be used, for example, as a third samurai to score 12, 24, 48 points. Obviously, the Good Karma Buddha can also be used as a wild card to pair with a Shogun, so you could score 40 points with this setup. Buddha can also be used to complete a class run, so in this case, uh, the Buddha is counted as the highest value card missing. So in this case, it would be the Shugo to complete that run, and so you just add them up, be 9, 29 plus 10 is 39. Um, normally, in a normal hand where the shogun, shogun is not present, uh, most times you will substitute uh, the Buddha for the Shogun. So in this case, this is the highest missing card needed for the class run, so it would score the same uh, 39 points. So finally, how does the strategy markers affect the scoring? How does the power play and passive markers affect the scoring? If you play passive, that means you just accept the score on the board and you score it appropriately. If you choose power play, you're attempting to double your score. You double your score if you are the only player to turn up a power play marker, or if there are multiple players that turn up that power play marker, if you have the highest score of all the players that play the power play, then you score double the points. If you are the player that calls for a power play and you don't have the highest score, you score zero for the hand. So it's a double or nothing kind of, kind of thing. If two players tie with the power play score, so if two players uh, have the highest score in the power play and they happen to have the same score, then the power play doubling goes to the next player that uh, the that played the power play so if two players uh, you know match their score they score zero and the doubled score is awarded to the next highest power play player if any it is very possible that you may have a hand which is literally worth zero uh, if you uh, have zero uh, you can either uh, play passive and just accept your uh, bad luck or you can go for a power play if you happen to uh, be the only player that plays the power play on a zero hand, you score 20 points. However, if there's another power, pl power play, even from someone that, that scores zero as well, then you lose 20 points from the zero power player's score. So it can affect multiple players. If, uh, if a bunch of people do a power play on a zero, you're going to lose 20 points each. And this is how to play the basic game of James Clavell's Shogun card game. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. This has been Legendary Tactics.